What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Rise Up Rich podcast. I'm your host, David Haas. I'm flying solo today here in the studio. Well, I got my social media coordinators here, but uh, we're talking about how success is anticlimactic. And it's going to be a little bit of a weird one, I guess, but uh, I think it's going to deliver you a lot of value because if, if you can really grasp this concept, um, and it's about learning how to become successful the right way because the goal will not be as amazing as you think it is. And I experienced this firsthand multiple times throughout my life um, when I got to like a financial goal. I remember when I was $350,000 in debt and I remember saying, if I just got out of this debt, my life would be amazing. And I'm going to dance in the streets was the joke I always used to say to, say to my wife. And then I got out of debt like through a lot of hard work and um, making my business you know super successful i was able very quickly to get out of a lot of debt and but when i reached that goal it nothing changed there wasn't even a feeling like that that changed it was just like it was this exact same and then i said once i have five thousand bucks in the bank consistently then i'll then i'll i'm gonna be happy i'm gonna be i'm gonna dance on the streets then i had the five thousand bucks and it was once it was ten thousand then once it was a hundred thousand once it's a million and every time i reached one of these goals it was just like it was just it was just this feeling of like oh yeah i'm here it wasn't this big party i wasn't dancing in the streets and it was funny that my wife and i had that joke about dancing in the streets it's just because that's the way success works. You have this desire, this drive, whatever it is inside you, you keep moving towards it and then you reach it and you're like, oh, I'm here, right? And this is the problem with success and this is why we see a lot of people that rise to the top and then they fall because they think that becoming successful, becoming famous, whatever it may be, getting in that relationship, finally moving out of their house, uh, um, finally buying a new car, finally getting the sports car, they think that it's going to be this moment of like, whoa, like I'm so excited. My life is amazing. And it's just really not. You just, you get there and you're like, oh, I'm here. Right. And, uh, so that's important to, to make that realization. And I know if you're not there yet, you're probably going like, uh, Dave's full of shit. He doesn't know what he's talking about, but I'm just telling you from my own personal experience, like this is what will happen. So this is why it's so important for us to become successful the right way. And I think today's podcast will really help you come to an understand understanding of what it is you're actually after when it with regards to success and when i say success it's in any area of life rise up rich the podcast is not about rising up rich making money but that could be it for you but it's about rising up rich in all areas of your life in love and relationships and health and wealth everything it's about being rich in all areas of your life so we're just using money because money is the one that uh, i was after for the longest time so here's here's the thing about about what it is you want to achieve it's not about the thing or the money or the relationship that you're after it's about how that is going to make you feel okay so if you can just learn how to connect to that feeling right now before you obtain whatever it is you want to obtain before you reach that goal or that mountaintop then that is what is going to allow that thing to flow into your life and it's going to flow into your life effortlessly. This is what manifesting is all about. It's about becoming. It's not about getting, it's about becoming. So how do you do this? How do you start to feel the way you want to feel even though you don't have that thing that you think is going to make you feel better? Okay, well, it's about doing the inner work. It's about doing spiritual growth. It's about it's about getting out of this zone of spiritual entertainment or personal development entertainment and actually doing the work okay so what is the work so let me just take you through my own personal life example i think that's going to be the way it's it's going to be able to best described to you so for me making money having a million dollars in liquid cash was the goal for the longest time for for my whole entire life i want to become a millionaire that's all i ever said if anyone asked me what i was doing i was like i'm just hustling i'm grinding i'm trying to get to that place where i make a million dollars and luckily i was able to get introduced to uh, my business partner my friend and now someone that i consider my mentor and he was basically showing me the principles of spiritual growth and without that real with It wasn't like this one-on-one coaching that I do with my clients now where I sit, I sat, was sitting across from him. He was telling me like, uh, you know, 
how to get to these deep places to heal from the things that I needed to heal from. It was just, I was just kind of getting it by osmosis, by being around them. So this is the power of being around people that uh, are already living the life that you want to live. So now I look back with hindsight, I can see everything that happened, but ultimately it was about this is that I was placing all of my happiness in the future where I was a millionaire. So I wasn't going to allow myself to be happy until I achieved that level of success. And this is where grind, hustle, sacrifice all came into play. I was going to work hard now, grind, do the work so that I could enjoy my life in this future place where I was a multimillionaire, okay? But when just when I say that out loud, uh, to me now, I'm like, that is, sounds like the stupidest thing in the world to do, okay? Whereas most people are like, they've, they've romanticized the grind and the hustle and the sacrifice. It's like, if you grind and you hustle and you sacrifice, then you're going to get rewarded by having all of these things, by living this amazing life. But the question being is like, why don't you just focus on living that amazing life right now by feeling the way you want to feel by, or by reaching that goal. So that's pretty much what happened to me. It, for me, it was about happiness. It was about just enjoying life. And yeah, you could dig into it more. It could be about freedom. It could be about, um, you know, I guess the, another, another one that was in there for me was being like, um, you know, desirable to women would be one of my things, right? So there was a couple other underlying things, but the main one was success was going to make me happy because I wasn't happy now because I was grinding and I was hustling. As I started doing the spiritual work, I just started becoming happier. It just happened. I wasn't trying to become happier. It just happened from doing the spiritual work. Now in my coaching programs, I teach people how to feel the way they want to feel. But I'm going to show you right now in this podcast how you can do the same thing. So I started becoming happier. And then as I started becoming happier and I started feeling the way I wanted to feel, despite not having reached the goal of making a million dollars, something amazing happened is that money began to flow into my life and it was flowing into my life effortlessly not meaning that i wasn't doing the work i was still working but it was no longer this grind or this hustle or the sacrifice i was working because i wanted to work because i enjoy working i enjoyed the process of being an entrepreneur i enjoyed creating things that had, were yet to be created i enjoyed um, um the whole aspect of business on how to get people through my doors on how to how to increase my sales like I love that I loved controlling costs I love looking at uh, financial statements and crunching numbers like this is this it's in, it's inside of me and so there was no more sacrifice or grind I was just enjoying the process right and I was just feeling happier like I was just becoming more happy I got out of this this like grumpy mindset of like the guy that has his head down and is just working hard and is not going to allow any joy in to this person that had his head up and was allowing the joy to flow into my life. So as I started becoming happier, I started making more and more money. And the crazy thing is, is it's still happening. The happier I become, the more money I keep making. And it's because it's because I'm feeling more and more the way that goal was going to make me feel. So the question is, okay, so how did I do it? How did I become happier? How did I become the way I wanted to feel by obtaining a, how did I start feeling the way I wanted to feel by obtaining the goal without yet obtaining the goal? Okay, so it was actually relatively, well, I don't wanna say it, so it was, yeah, I guess it was, it was simple because it just happened over time for me, but it was ultimately about coming to the realization of why I wasn't feeling happy for me because it was happiness and this could be anything for anybody else, any other feeling but why I wasn't feeling happy right now in this moment, right? And it wasn't because I didn't have the money. It was because there was something that was blocking my happiness, right? And for me, it was um, it was about self-doubt, right? I didn't believe I was good enough. I didn't believe I could do it. I um, didn't think I had all the tools or I didn't think I had all the knowledge. I felt like there was something that I was missing. Um, I believed that I had to hustle, grind, and sacrifice, and work hard in order to obtain success, success because that's what I've been taught my entire life. So it was about bringing awareness to what programs that I had bought into, okay? And once I had awareness around what those programs were, then I could begin to do the work to start creating the mindset necessary to attract whatever it is I wanted to attract into my life. Okay, so 
the second thing I had to do is start understanding why I didn't feel good enough. Okay. Where did that begin in my life and go back and do the work there? So ultimately for me, my own personal story was when I was a kid, I was like this fun loving kid. I was the life of the party. Um, I was full of energy. Like literally my parents like said, I never like walked down a flight of stairs. I would just like swing and jump from the stairs, like be on the top stair and jump to the bottom. Like I never, I was just full of energy, like just nonstop. But then slowly things start happening to you in your life that puts you back into you start not, not not put you back into I should say it. they start putting you into a shell okay so a few of the things that happened to me a big big one was that my mom got sick and when I was seven she died when I was nine of cancer from that point forward I was left and you guys know this story if you listen to the podcast but I'm just gonna say it again for the purpose of this when she left my dad was left in charge and essentially like my brother and I had free reign of the house and we were, we were taking care of ourselves. I was doing my own laundry. I was making my own lunches. Um, I was in charge of getting myself to school while my brother and I, and we just weren't going to school. We weren't, we weren't taking care of ourselves. Um, we were dressing in shitty clothes and, you know, not taking showers enough. And there was this one moment in my life where these girls pulled me aside and they say, Dave, you're like the smelly kid in school, okay? Now, this was completely repressed, meaning without doing the spiritual work, I would have never been aware of it because it was so bad that I pushed it down so far that I forgot about it. But because I started getting in tune to, there was, I started getting in tune that there was blocks to me feeling the way I wanted to feel. There was blocks to me having happiness. I started searching for why those blocks existed, where they began in my life. So one of the places I was brought to was this moment. And then I asked myself in that moment, what was it that I was feeling? And it was shame. Shame and embarrassment is what I felt in that moment. So from that moment forward, I started making the association with success and money. That was my mechanism for never allowing myself to feel that shame ever again. But because of this spiritual growth, all I did was go back there and feel the shame, allow myself to fully feel the shame from that moment. And then from there, other moments started popping up. I remember we used to drive like the shittiest car, like we had this Ford Tempo. And if you're young, you're not even gonna know what a Ford Tempo is, but it's a Ford Tempo. And it uh, it was in a car accident, my brother had crashed it, and it was in a car accident, and um, it had different color fenders. It also had two flat tires, and we were using spare tires in the back. So it's like this this different colored fender, multicolored car, rust on the side, two spare tires, and we're driving around through my town of Essex that I grew up in. And I remember being so embarrassed being in that car that when I, we would drive by people, whether I knew them or not, I would pretend like I was tying my shoes so I could duck down and no one would see me in the car, right? This is the the level of shame and embarrassment I felt about the way that I grew up. So in my mind, the mechanism that I created was I was going to become successful, right? Then I was never going to feel that way ever again. So this is where I came to this mentality that I was going to grind and hustle and work hard. And I didn't care about anything else because I just didn't never want to feel shame. But through the process of spiritual growth, I came to the realization I could just go back and allow myself to feel that shame, allow it to run its course. If we don't allow ourselves to feel our emotions, they will continue on forever. Resistance is the fuel that keeps emotions going. So because I was doing this spiritual work with my my friend and mentor, Andrew, I started allowing myself to become free of these emotions. And once I removed the emotion, the mechanism that I had created was no longer necessary. The desire for money began to melt away as I released myself from these these blocks to experiencing happiness. Okay. So that was step one was, well, that was step one and two, actually. Step one was realize, become aware of what was actually putting me into my shell, why I had, I had gone into the shell in the first place. Step two was, okay, now that I know why I'm in the shell, let me just deal with it. Let me just go back and deal with all of my problems. So I just went back there and allow myself to feel it. And I did it in multiple ways. I did it through the process of actually letting go, which is just sitting with your emotions, connecting to them and feeling them fully. That was step one, just, or that was actually step two of my three-step process, just feeling them. But there's three ways that I know to let go of. The second one was I just started journaling about it, right? Just started like taking myself back there and kind of being my own therapist to my younger self. So when, you know, that incident with the girls happened, it was like grade six. So however old you are then, um, so 
I just brought myself back and I just started asking my, my grade six self, let's say I'm 10, 10 year old self. Um, how are you feeling after that happened? Like, how, how did that make you feel? Like, tell me about it. Let those emotions out and not, not giving that person, not giving that kid, like not trying to make him feel better, actually trying to make him, I don't want to say feel worse, but it's essentially what you're trying to do. You're trying to allow those emotions to escape immediately. Okay. So that's what I did in, in, in journaling. This was my journaling cues. The last thing is I got a coach. I got a therapist. I got mentors. Like I got people that I could allow myself to talk about these emotions and be free of them in a non-judgmental, non-biased setting, meaning not with friends and family. Okay. And this was the process that allowed me to begin creating the awareness necessary to let go of the feelings. And then finally, the last step was just to realign with new habits, realign though, more importantly, with who I truly was, realign myself with who I was as a kid, that kid that was full of energy, full of life, love being around people, love entertaining, love doing all those things. And was just happy all the time. Like that's who I was. I was just this happy kid. Like I loved people so deeply. I loved life so deeply. And I had gotten so far removed from that. But now that I was free, I was aware and I was free of those blocks. I then was allowed to realign with who I truly was. And and there's this moment I, I talk about all the time, but it was just like I had been resisting joy so much that I just had to reprogram myself to allow the joy to flow into my life and there's this moment I'd said, i've said this story a million times but my wife was getting into bed and she box jumped into bed and i could feel myself actually resisting laughing right because i wasn't supposed to be having a good time yet because i had not reached my goal of becoming a millionaire and i became aware and in tune to the fact that i was resisting it. and finally i just allowed it to flow and literally it was like opening up the floodgates of joy and from that moment forward i just stopped resisting the joy now there's still moments in my life right now today where I catch myself resisting joy, okay? Where I catch myself judging myself that I should be doing more or um, I, should be, I should be further along. And every time I start getting into this place of judging myself and, and resisting joy, that's when things start to fall apart for me. So luckily, because of the work I've done, I can recognize the fact that I'm in these moments and I can just realign with my true self, realign with the programs and the patterns and the behaviors that I know maximize my level of happiness because that's ultimately what I'm after is happiness. So the question for you in this podcast is, what is it that you're after by obtaining a certain goal, by reaching a certain milestone in your life? What is the feeling that you're after? And then the next question you have to ask yourself is, why aren't you feeling that way already? If you can get to the root of this issue, and this is what spiritual growth is, this is what real personal development is, is actually doing the work. Stop just listening to this podcast and consuming the information and actually after this podcast is over, get out your journal and be like, why am I not happy why do i not feel loved i need to add a partner in order to feel complete why don't i feel complete right if you can start to get to the roots of these problems then you can create the awareness necessary to heal from them then once you heal from them you can realign with your true self and then guess what all that you desire will begin to flow in your life and like i said this is a process of manifesting is about feeling the way you want to feel even before you reach the goal so I'm going to wrap it up there. We're going to keep this podcast short because I think this is all I wanted you to do. I, I want you to stop consuming so much information. I want you to do the work. So normally my podcasts are like an hour long. This one's only going to be about 20 minutes long, which essentially left you 40 minutes to sit and do the work today. If you haven't already, just make sure you click subscribe so you get all my content. Thanks for taking the time to listen. And uh, I hope that this podcast serves you well.